Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jim, and I'm here to give you a sneak peek at a couple of really cool prototypes. This is going to be a brand new model from Avian Knives called the Topaza, and it's going to retail for $295. Now, that's far less money than their first model offering right here, which was their semi-custom model, the Atlas. The Topaza is a radical new design that takes them further into the direction they were already headed. The Atlas was a popular model, but they had a lot of setbacks time-wise for their initial release. They had done a pre-order, and then they had some production issues, which delayed things by, I think it was like a year. But now that they've finally delivered on their orders, people have been waiting to see what's next. Well, the Topaza is a worthy follow-up, I think. And the point of this brand, for those that don't know, if you haven't watched my videos on the Atlas, the whole point of the brand and the inspiration for the brand name is to make shockingly lightweight but rigid and strong knives. Lightweight without sacrificing durability. Now, the Topaza name comes from the Topaz Hummingbird, and what do we know about hummingbirds besides how fast they are? How small and lightweight they are, and this thing is light. Unnervingly light. 1.6 ounces. Now, they claim it's the lightest frame lock flipper on the market, and I don't see any evidence to argue that point. But for me personally, it's, it's a little bit too light. I like lightweight for EDC, but I still want to have a little bit of heft. And even though the Atlas was only two ounces, I think it was, what, 2.1 ounces, I think, it's still, you still had a little bit of heft to it, even though it was really, really, really lightweight. This is crazy, ridiculous lightweight. Like, it, it almost defies... All logic. Now, I know a lot of people that prioritize weight for their EDC items, particularly their knife, but not just for their pocket, but imagine you're packing a backpack or some other bag knowing that everything that you add is more weight. Okay, so you got your flashlight, you got your knife, you've got maybe a fixed blade knife, you've got your tourniquet, you've got your ouchie kit, your little small first aid kit. You've got all these things that you're adding into your kit, and at some point you end up having to take things out that you really wanted to have in there. Well, you don't have that worry with the Topaza. With the Topaza, again, it, it just it doesn't weigh anything. Now, the reduced weight, I'm going to show you on the black one because I think it will show up a little bit better. The reduced weight is achieved by skeletonizing a significant amount of the titanium frame. So first, it's titanium, so it's already very, very lightweight. Secondly, they're skeletonizing so many pockets and windows out of it that there's almost no material left. 
But it's not just skeletonized randomly because that could create a lot of structural weakness. This is an isogrid. The isogrid, originally engineered for rockets and spacecraft, is a geometric pattern optimized for maximum strength and lightweight construction. And that's the definition that uh, Avian actually gave me for isogrid. And I'm pretty sure that's the same definition that you would find on Wikipedia or anything else. Uh, it was developed by NASA and used in some of their space projects. And it's used all throughout aerospace. Now, yeah, it's crazy light, but this trellis style design is actually supporting the structure as almost as much as if it were completely solid. So let's see if I can give you a better angle on this. So you see right here, you see like this triangular beam, right? You see how there's a pocket, a step down milled into it. So you have this top line support here. You've got this crossing over all of these skeletonized areas, giving even more support. And this is all in different dimensions, different layers. So the pockets that you see down here that are completely skeletonized are a lower level of a piece of titanium that was however thick that total thickness is. They've cut out that window and then they've cut windows within that window. And then you have these rigid beams that are going across all of it. So throughout all of these multiple layers, all of these multiple steps, you're actually building in strength and rigidity while you're removing all of this material and creating something that's lightweight and it's not sacrificing a lot of strength. And that's really interesting. And I've never seen anybody else do this in quite the same way. I've seen plenty of knives that had skeletonized sections, of course, but not using the actual ISO grid where you have these layers and you have these beams and these geometric patterns which are there to support the frame in every direction. It's really interesting. It's really cool. Now, we've got to talk about the action, right? Because at the end of the day, when we're buying flippers, we want a really nice, fast, snappy action. And Avian, once again, nails that quick, snappy action, just like they did on the Atlas. But the flipper tab this time is far more minimal. And really, the flipper tab wasn't obnoxious on the Atlas. It was very small and set forward of the pivot as well. And that gave you the leverage where you could just simply pull straight back, light switch it, and it would flip out like crazy. Now you've got the same concept here, and it's the tiniest flipper tab you could imagine for this knife. It's got some nice jimping on there so that you're actually grabbing right onto it. They did a really, really nice job on that. So they made it as small as possible, yet easily accessible and still very, very useful. Now, as far as the blade steel, Avian settled on MagnaCut. And MagnaCut, I think, was a good choice because of the steel's amazing balance of hardness, toughness, and corrosion resistance. They felt this was paramount because of how crazy thin the blade is and how ridiculously thin the grind is in order for this to be a true slicer. So what you've got is one of the thinnest blades that you're ever going to come across on a knife that doesn't feel flimsy or weak in any way and super crazy slicey. Overall, I think the balance of this knife is well done. I think they've achieved the balance of their goals. They wanted a Good, medium, compact size knife, just like they had with the Atlas, right? And they wanted to go as light as humanly possible and still feel rigid and, and I don't want to say rugged because this is not like holding a Demco, but it, they wanted to still feel rigid and tough and strong where you weren't afraid to use it. That was a key point 
with the Atlas because it's a key point with the entire brand is they wanted you to have something that was lightweight and very easy to carry that you wouldn't be afraid to actually use. While I see this being really, really popular, especially with people who like lightweight EDCs that are carrying a lot of things, this is going to be a major hit. For somebody like me, I have no problem still carrying around like a Chavez 229 or a Demco or something like that. I don't want something heavy, but I want to feel a little bit of that substance, a little bit of that heft. I'm the same way with my flashlights as well. I, I, I do like a lightweight, smaller flashlight, but there are definitely times that I want to have something that's got a little more heft to it. Yeah, this is a teeny tiny little light. And it performs great. It's got 4,000 lumens in this teeny tiny little thing. But I can feel it in my hand. There's a little bit of substance. However, I don't want something that is going to weigh down my pocket. And I've, I've definitely become the same way about guns. Look how popular, you know, polymer framed striker, fighter, fighter <laughs> striker fired pistols have become. It's not that we want something that's more cheaply made. We want something that's still high quality and accurate and reliable. But if we're going to carry the darn thing all day long, we want it to be as comfortable as it can be. Because nothing about EDC or about carrying of anything is about comfort. But we want to make it as comfortable as we can. And I can certainly understand somebody that's a real outdoors person that's packing up a backpack. Maybe you're going on a hike. I don't know. I don't know what you do. And you're trying to load as many things that are necessities into that bag as possible. And maybe that's going to include water bottles and things like that. You are clearly going to be giving up something. You're not going to be able to carry every single thing that you want on that hike. With something like this, if everything in your pack was designed in the same manner to reduce weight as much as possible while still maintaining strength and rigidity, then it would be a lot easier. You know, there are guys that make choices between different styles of carabiners because of the weight. Obviously, they want it to be strong and work well, but weight is going to be a major consideration for them. So, all of that was a very long-winded way of saying this is really light. I know that it's quality because I know the, the typical quality that Avian is putting out. Having owned this now for two years? Man, has it been that long? No. Has it been two years? Maybe it's been two years. But knowing the quality that they're putting out, how much time and effort they're putting into engineering these things, into the manufacturing, then into the finishing. So much is going into these that I know it's going to be fantastic for anybody that has the same, that puts the same emphasis on the same things, lightweight plus strong. Me, I'm okay with a little teeny tiny bit of weight plus strong. How about that? That's a good way of putting it, I suppose. Anyway, I am going to end this here. I'm going to send these prototypes off now to a couple of other YouTubers so you can get their opinions on it. Uh, I am blessed to have been able to come out here and give the world debut on these and be the first person to show them. I want to thank Avian for considering me for that. I really do appreciate it. They're super cool. They're really awesome. And I've had weeks to play with these. And I've enjoyed every minute of it. But when it comes to actual everyday carry, it's it's still going to be... I, I, it's hard to really get more perfect than the Atlas. They did such an amazing job. But there are a lot of people out there that can't spend $650 on a semi-custom knife. And it's much easier to spend $295 on a production-grade knife. And that's their, the, the difference is in the classes of knife that they're making. They're separating everything into, into two different named classes. One is going to be for the higher end, the more limited production versions that are much more hand-finished. And then you have the Glide, 
which is going to be their production versions and more mass produced so that they can make more quantities to satisfy more of the customer base. So I think that was a great idea too, to kind of separate their brand into two branches and allow people to, to buy what they want based on their specific needs. Do I feel I have to have a semi-custom that has to be hand fit and hand ground and all these things? Fine, then I'm going to buy that. But that's not all that brand is about. Because there are lots of brands that offer that. And you're like, oh man, I love their designs. I love their models, but I can't afford to spend that much every time. And I want to continue to support the brand. And that's why they did these. So that you've got something that's very, very comparable, but is production, is mass produced, and you are able to much more easily afford it. Now, 300 bucks is still a lot for a knife, don't get me wrong, but it's not a lot for what you're getting. It's not a lot when you're talking about true innovation. And so far, everything that Avian has made has been true innovation. Beginning, you know, with the Atlas, with the completely toolless disassembly. You don't need a single tool. This thing is put together like a jigsaw puzzle. And things interlock and slide and pull out. And you've got a knife you can completely disassemble without any tools within seconds. And now you've got what appears to be the lightest weight titanium frame lock flipper on the market. That's pretty darn cool. Anyway, I'm out of here for now. Thank you guys for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next video.